Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. Today, the person that you're going to meet, he's coming on our channel for the first time. He is a music composer, a music educator, and a creator of large scale musical productions. Dr. Kanix Kanikeswaran. Kanix, welcome to P Guru's channel. Hello, Sri. Thank you very much for having me here. So, uh, viewers, um, I met Kanix, I think, three years ago when he was putting together a musical production called Shanti, means peace. And this was uh, something like uh, similar to watching perhaps Ilai Raja do a complete <laughs> composition of a song with, you know, except that I guess Ilai Raja had a thousand violins. Here he had a thousand voices. He had about 100 plus male and female voices. And then there was the extensive orchestration around it. And this was a two hour musical extravaganza where he seamlessly flowed from classical music, classical Indian music to Western classical and back. And I tell you, this is not so easy. And as uh, you know, we progress in this series, we call this thing music appreciation series. As we progress through this series, you will get a real appreciation for music. What happens when you listen to a song? Why does it make you want to listen to it again and again? Why does it, you know, somehow de invoke some deep emotions? Sometimes in the morning when you listen to it, the different emotions when you listen to it in the evening. We have yeah. a, a whole a set of things that uh, impact us because music is that one great thing. In fact, people say that music is a language of gods. So we are going to talk to Kanix. We're going to take a deep dive into music, but before that, we will come back up. We'll go up and down this music, light music, <laughs> Carnatic music, classical music. The point for this is, this is for you, the, this is for you, the viewer who wants to understand a little bit beyond saying, ah, I like this song, I like this tune. Now we are telling you, we're going to say, share our experiences on what a certain song did to us. And, and to hear all about this, let's go to Kanix. By the way, before even that, I'm sorry, I take, I'm taking too much time away from our guest today. Kanix, I knew him from my college days, 30 plus years ago. Those days, the internet had a slightly different form. It was all text and, and there was a very... Uh, an active uh, group called SOC, C-O-L-T. There's a, a long name after that. There, people would discuss about music. That was the time when Eli Raja was flying really high, MS Vishwanath. You think about it. By the way, viewers, don't get turned off because I'm talking about Tamil music composers. This applies to music, music in general. So please hang on there. You, We will come to you. I mean, if this is music that you're going to appreciate. And that's what we are going to be talking about. 30 odd years ago, when I was a student, you know, there used to be not internet, but there was something that was a precursor to, to in, precursor to internet. And one of the groups that was very active at that time was called SOCCULT. I think SOC.COLT, something, 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 something. Now, in this group, there were a lot of uh, students such as myself. Uh, we would all discuss about, you know, what song was based on what raga. For me, I've never learned uh, Carnatic music. I've never learned any classical music. It's just play by the ear, appreciation all by the ear. So I frequently would get things wrong and people would get into verbal fisticuffs. You wouldn't believe the kind <laughs> of words that we would use when we would uh, go after each other. And everybody- Actually, you know, nothing, must, nothing much has changed in terms of what <laughs> used to happen then and what happens on social media now. So. Right, so, but the good thing was once Kanix would weigh in, that was the last word. And people will go on to the next fight. So Kanix was our ultimate referee arbiter. I never thought I would meet him 30 plus years later. When he introduced himself to me, I said, were you the one who used to? And then we, you know, we went back to 30 years and we remembered all these things. So even then, Kanix was a, a, an authority on music. He knew his basics. He knew his fundamentals. And he would always caution saying that, don't try to pin a song with one rag because in music, movie composers, music composers will take liberties. It will drift in and out. All you can say is it has, it carries notes about this ragam. And it really, you know, made me uh, more grounded in this and, and not claim that, oh, this movie, this song is on based on this ragam. This is just to impress people. You know, that's what people used to do. Oh, I know this. This is, and you will be very wrong. But um, Kanix, um, today, I would like you to perhaps first start by sharing your experiences, how you got into music, and, and then we will go into the first 
episode. By the way, viewers, we are going to start with one music director, Ilai Raja. And the reason we started with uh, Ilai Raja is that in our opinion, well, he was a guy who was, we grew up with. So it's an easy one to work on and it, it had a lot more effect on us, I guess. But Ilai Raja personifies something that, um, you know, all of us knew we had in us, which was the, the depth of understanding uh, uh, classic, Indian classical music. This is the, perhaps the most uh, comprehensive use of mathematics that you see in that. Uh, and, and you don't know this, but you, you are already enjoying it. You're already probably knowing it. And when you're trying to stay in, in beat with a song and so on. So uh, just listen to this uh, episodes. You will, these episodes, and you will really, really have fun. Kanix, take it away. Sure. Yeah. So, um, see, when I was growing up in Chennai, I was raised in North Madras. Um, what, what you know of as uh, Paris Corner. So chances are that if you look at any of the Pallavan buses, most of yes, them would yes. terminate. <laughs> most of them would terminate in Paris Corner. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, growing, growing up there, I uh, trained in Carnatic music when I was uh, like in middle school, the equivalent of middle school starting um, or even lower than that. Um, I, so I grew up in a family where my uh, chittis used to learn to play the veena. So I kind of learned along with them. And then the, uh, the teacher felt that, hey, it, it would be worth my spending time and learning by myself, l learning myself. And then, so one thing led to another. And I was really fond of Carnatic music growing up. It's, see, there used to be a lot of very nice programs on All India Radio and my family used to listen to them. And so growing up, you had no choice but to listen to it and actually kind of start liking it. Then while growing up, you realize, okay, there are some, patterns that you see in music and these patterns constituted ragas and families of ragas and relationships between ragas and so on and so forth. So as a young mind, as a curious kid, you start thinking about these things and then every now and then a relative would pop up and ask, okay, what, what there's a song playing on the, uh, being played by another Suram on the street, what ragam is that and all that. So, I mean, this is a, I mean, lo a lot of us would have experienced this growing up in Chennai. Um, but it was only like uh, um, when I joined IIT that, no, no actually even during my 10th standards when Ilai Raja came to me. So, yeah, one fine day when I was uh, doing doing my homework on a Friday night, there was this Oli Moliam playing on black and white Doodarshan and I heard his tune. Jinna Kanna Nadi Kiran. So, well, what's, what's going on? So, uh, this is Riti Gaula. This is a Pakka tune in uh, Riti Gaula, and I, I can hear Balamurli Krishna's voice and what is it doing in film music. Um, especially this was the age just after the period where songs like Pache Kili Muttu Charma and all yes. of popular. You know? <laughs> so, so that was a huge, um, uh, it, it was like a sudden change in the way film songs began to sound. So, and then after going to, um, uh, I, I joined IIT and then while I was in the hostel, um, listening to uh, radio there, um, many other songs began to appear and they all had their roots in, um, well, I wouldn't say roots, but they were influenced a lot by the scales of uh, ragas or Carnatic music. And uh, um, there were many interesting things that were happening. So, it's not just pure classical raga based tunes they were the context was totally different you know um, uh, uh, ideas from the scales of certain ragas were uh, adapted into modern orchestration modern then or contemporary at that point in time there were strings and there was all kinds of instruments and all that and, and it was like a totally 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 new world it was really cool then and you, you got to put your mind in in the um, uh, put yourself in the mind, in the shoes of a teenager at that point in time, um, where there was no social media, there was no way to record these songs. But your mind was like a tape recorder, right? Yes. Because at that well, time, when you did not have access to these devices, you you actually recorded them in your head. Yes. And replaying them over and over and over again, just right. enjoyed them. I mean, those are very blissful moments at that 
uh, yes, in, yes. in the 1970s. And, yeah. and, and, and sorry to interrupt you, I might add that you had only one radio station, you had only one TV channel. <laughs> you had a choice of listening to Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation for Tamil songs, or you could yes. listen to Vivid Bharati. And 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 uh, the same went for Hindi also. In Hindi stations had a Vivid Bharati, and they also had Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Please and continue. the Sri Lanka thing was uh, shortwave, so you wouldn't always get it. And there was yes. always a humming sound that used to come with it. Oh, the, then, there was there was more to that than that, Kanik. Sorry to interrupt you again. See, the radio Moscow, they knew mm-hmm. that people listened to 25 kilo, 25 megahertz. I think that was the yeah. shortwave mm-hmm. band for uh, Radio Salon and, yeah. and, or Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. It started out as Radio Salon and it became a yeah, Sri yeah. Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. So mm-hmm. Radio Moscow would, would, uh, would broadcast exactly at the same or maybe just a little bit uh, away from that and at such a strong power that your shortwave radio uh, would almost always pick up the Radio Moscow and, and not the Sri Lanka Broadcasting oh. Corporation. Okay. Please continue. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation always had played a better collection and selection of songs compared to Vivid Bharati. Yes. And then uh, so some of the non-Vivid Bharati stations also used to play some music and Vivid, Bha- Vivid Bharati was uh, full of commercials. And uh, But despite all that, you got, got a fair chance to hear stuff. And then plus when you walk to school, when you walk around the city, you would hear these songs being played in... Uh, uh, what, what you used to refer to as tikkada. Yes. Like I was saying we have we had very limited resources to listen to music. Po, right in today's day and age, I mean, there's so many places where you can get your uh, music feeds from. Uh, YouTube is full of them, plus uh, all kinds of other radio stations on the internet. And you search for a song, you find it. It never used to be like that before. You only had limited access. Nothing was on demand. Um, you relied on Vivid Bharati and plus one free source of music that you had was when you walked the streets of Madras, music used to blare from speakers in uh, tea shops, the tikkada music. So on the Pona, you, can get, you could get hot tea served in glass cups plus with a, with a, with a huge uh, um, quota of music. Um, the latest film songs, old songs, it all depend, depended on the taste of the, the, the the tea kind of person, where he tuned to and all that. And your mind registered all that. So even obscure songs that you, you heard then probably not too many times, they come back to you now because as a child and as a teenager, you recorded them. And uh, uh, there's a saying called, in Tamil called Pasumarat, Pasumarat, Pasumarat Ani. So um, a nail driven into a growing tree. It's, it's it's going to be very hard to pull it out once the tree matures. Yes. So similarly, songs that got etched in our minds in those days, like, yes. like in the late 70s and the early 80s, I mean, those are still fresh in our minds. And I'd like to die listening to those songs whenever I die, you know? <laughs> yes. So um, viewers, what we are going to do in this series is talk about the effect of songs on people and, and try to analyze what it was that the music director or the composer did that achieved that effect. So we're going to start with one song. I mean, it was not like, you know, why this song I can't explain, Canics can't explain. But for some reason, when we started planning out these episodes, these episodes, we said, let's start with this song because it was one of those songs that Ilai Raja did, which completely tugged at your heartstrings. It made you sit up and take notice because it was based on a raga, which is probably not use for a romantic uh, composition. And uh, Kanix, tell me how you felt when you heard this song for the first time. See, I never get sick of narrating this story at all. See, um, back in um, Madras, in those days when you used to sleep on the floor, you used to spread a jamakalam and sleep on the floor at night. And there used to be uh, my brothers and I used to listen to music on from Vivid Bharati at night on a little uh, handheld transistor radio, okay? Um, and y- you had to spend a couple of bucks to put batteries into them. And then you had to listen to it at a very low volume because the household would have gone to sleep by 8.45, 9 o'clock. And these programs used to come on radio only at 9.30. They were actually commercial programs. They were meant to introduce films that, they were, co- that were going to be released. So in Tamil, we used to refer to them as 
So this is not as regularly scheduled program, but it's a commercial broadcast. Yeah. So um, these would start at 9.30 and uh, I used to listen to these keeping the volume very low because I didn't want, never didn't want to wake up, wake my father or my mother up who uh, it was well past their bedtime at that point in time. So uh, um, one day, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, the, this is Tambran alert, guys. Most most Chennaiites go to sleep at nine sharp. Nine is like the latest. Nine sharp, yeah. they are asleep. They usually get up at four. This has got nothing to do with habits. It's more to do with the climate because Chennai is pleasant from say like four a.m. to like eight a.m. or nine. After that, the sun starts beating down twelve months <laughs> a year until you have to wait for the sea breeze to come in. These days, with all the big buildings along the coast, that sea breeze is gone. <laughs> so, but. You know, this is we are talking about you know growing our uh, growing years in the late late seventies, early eighties. Please continue, Kanix. Yeah. So where was I? Um, we were talking about you know like, listening to music. Why, why do we go to bed early in Chennai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, eight o'clock was like curfew time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and nine thirty is when these programs used to start, and they're typically presented presented by a guy called L R Narayanan. And one day they introduced the, the name of a new film that was going to come. It's called Panir Pushpangal. Okay. So when I heard the name, I said, "Okay, um, I, I've never heard it, heard this before. Let's see what it's what what the songs sound like." And then they played the first song, and the violins came, and I just sat up. Okay, there it looks like there's something in, happening here. Then the first part of the music started playing over over the sound of the uh, advertiser's voice where he was talking about the star cast and all that kind of stuff. And the song slowly picked up intensity and suddenly the, vo the voice started singing Ananda Ragam. And uh, I jumped up and I said, okay, I'm, I'm jacking up the volume because I want to listen to this. I don't want to miss any part of this. It's okay if my father got up. It's okay if he got mad. I woke and I pushed my brothers to wake up and listen to it also and said, hey, Umar Amananda, so the singer's name is Umar Ramanan, who is uh, who's a brilliant singer, who's totally underutilized in my opinion. And um, so th this was a song that was in her voice. We recognized her voice right away. And then, um, then slowly the song picked up intensity. So, so first of all, the pure notes starting way up in the in the in the range. Um, and then a lot of uh, flowy passages and all that. And then the violins keeping pace with, with the voice and a brisk waltz like a beat. And uh, going from section to section. You know, I was blown away. Okay, it suddenly it occurred to me. This song is in the scale of the Raga Simendra Madhyam. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Simendra Madhyam is... Uh, it didn't matter what Raga it was because the tune was brilliant. Uh, so, sorry, you were going to say something? Yes, I, I just wanted to you know interrupt you just briefly. Viewers, you are going to listen to that song now. We are going to play a few bars of that song, and then perhaps you can appreciate what Kanix is saying about the impact the song had on him. And it, the same with me. I mean, we Ilya Raja composed music for a thousand movies. Average count per movie was probably four or five songs. So you you know, so that is the amount of work he has done. Yet this one song stood out for us, and and we are going to play this thing a few bars. And then we'll pick up this conversation again. Then uh, the, the typical structure of any film song is like, it's like an A, B, B structure, right? The A is the Pallavi or what do you call the Sthai or Mukhda in yeah. Hindi. Yeah. And then you have the Antara, which is the Anupallavi or the Charana. There's two of those. And in between the two sections, you have what people refer to as BGM these days. So these, yeah. these are like musical interludes. So as soon as the, 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 the one of the highlights of Vilay Raja's music was the BGMs or the interludes in between stanzas and each of them, each line in those had a story to tell. So in this so song, I, I still remember listening to it with, through that little transistor radio. All that kind of stuff, okay. And then um, uh, it was beginning to have a telling effect. And suddenly they cut it off. The song got cut because it was a program where they were going to introduce the, uh, give, give shades of the entire movie, right? Then they started playing a couple of other songs. 
And then towards the end of the 15 minute segment, they replayed this song again and they continued from where they left. And then um, the strings and all came back and okay, the same awestruck feeling um, came in there and then the whole thing faded away. But that was a 15 minute experience in life that I would never ever forget. So that was an int introduction to a song, a masterpiece that was created like in 1981. Um, I think I heard Umar Raman sing it live later, maybe in 1984 or something like that. Then recently, there was a YouTube recording that came out with uh, Umar Raman, Raman singing this with an entire live orchestra. I see. So, yeah, I just said somewhere out on YouTube. And it's one of, it's one of the, I, I shared it on my social media feed at some point in time when I saw it. I just couldn't help it. Um, so the singing is brilliant. The tune is brilliant. The conceptualization in the song is brilliant. The way the interludes, interludes are created, the, uh, uh, the moods, even the orchestration, the section where you have a dholak uh, or a section of dholaks playing, uh, giving you a typical Indian beat in contrast to the section without the Indian beats and the shen. Out of the blue, there's a shenai coming from somewhere. Yeah. Not at all deviating from the scale of the raga of Simendra Madhya. That's the beauty of the whole thing. So right from the beginning to the end, that whatever dharma it is, that's been adhered to in this composition. And uh, uh, but you you don't for a minute feel that the song is constrained in any way, shape, or form. I mean, there's a tremendous freedom that you hear when you listen to it. There's, there's a tremendous amount of levity. Um, it takes you somewhere. It takes you to a different space. Yes, and uh, I like the way it was recorded. Uh, no amount of re-recording is going to do any justice to it. I think it, it's been pro it's probably been made remade in Hindi, but I don't think it's the same. We'll never get a, get the flavor of the, they never are the same. Of this song. Now, uh, the the song lyrics are Ananda Ragam. That means a happy tune. Now, this, yeah. this ragam, some Simhendra Madhyamam, is usually a fairly gambir, you know, bhakti kind of song where people are talking about Bhavasagaram, which is like you know, challenges in life and so on and so forth. But Ila Raja chose to portray the feelings of a young girl uh, and, and in this ragam and in a very high uh, tempo. Now, there is also another song that Ila Raja composed a few years later on a sad pathos. Uh, and, and it's also Simhendra Madhyamam. And that is classical in its most classical form. And it was sung beautifully by KJ Yesudas. And I'm going to play that for you just now uh, so that we can kind of uh, see how this maestro could swing based on the mood and the situation of the movie. He could take a particular ragam, stay true to it. He didn't change the bait. I mean, no swara change. It is pure Simhendra Madhyamam from the beginning to end, both these songs. Now you will hear the classical version of it, Ni Pornami. Please continue. You can go back to the other song. I just wanted to give the contrast. Uh, think about the uh... Um, uh, the use of, use of Simendra Madhyamam in the composition Ananda Ragam is that I want to make it very clear it's only the scale of Simendra Madhyamam that has been used in this composition. The Raga, it's, it's uh, first of all, when you look at Ragas, Ragas are, uh, let's say, in, in the most simplistic sense, you can call them families of tunes that are related. Okay, that's probably the most Raga is a melodic concept that deals with families or groups of tunes that are related and they together um, follow certain rules, a set of tunes that follow a certain set of rules and uh, based on which you can improvise and create more melodies and so on and so forth. So that's an abstract definition of a Raga. It's only over a period of time that constraints such as, uh, well, um, grammatical definitions such as this, scale of raga where this is a sequence of notes you use while going up and this is a sequence of notes that you use while coming down that's a theory that got imposed on the existing practical set of ragas over a period of time the theory became very elaborate and a lot of ragas got born from the theory and simhendra madhyamam is one of them so in that sense it's a very scalar raga it is not an old raga with this kind of characteristics that you see in ragas like uh, Yadukula Kambodhi or Senjuruti or Nata Kuranji or uh, Gaula or even Nata or something like that in Carnatic music or it's not a raga like Kedar or Miyaki Malhar 
or uh, Mia ki todi or anything like that. It's, it's something totally different. It's very scalar. So in a sense, you could say that uh, Ilera that just or this song could have been con conceived in a way that the um, uh, you you pick a harmonic minor scale in Western music and you just change change one note in it and decide to create a tune in it. That is also an approach with which you could create songs in the scale of Raga Simendra Madhima. And if you look at the history of Raga Simendra Madhima, there are uh, um, um, it go the the um, Raga very similar to Simendra Madhima, or probably the same. Uh, in the Dikshita school of music, is uh, um, referred referred to to as Sumadyuti, and uh, I. I think Ravindranath Tagore has composed uh, a song in the scale of Raga Simendra Madhyamam. I think Rab Pandit Ravi Shankar has also played it in Hindustani music. So um, there's a lot of contours that this Raga has covered. But I think Ilai Raja has used it in more than one, com in several compositions. Um, definitely these two. And I think there's more too. Yes. There's, uh, there's one, in, one in this movie called Thai Mukambike. I don't know if you've heard it. Yeah, I think Amma so this is totally in the lower range as opposed to Ananda Ragam, which starts full throatedly in the yes, uh, yes, yes. So um, viewers, we went a little deep into the Raga itself, but just I want to back up a little bit up and give you a quick overview of how this music evolved. Um, we don't know um, the origins of Carnatic music, whether the same ragas and were there, I'm sure they were there from like the Vedas time because even Sama Veda is supposed to be chanted in a particular raga and so on and so forth. But the standardization to some extent was done by a, a, a music a music musician called Venkata Makin. But before him was one other person, I forget his name, but Venkata Makin had a few things which uh, was controversial. And I think somebody called Govindacharya came and he established what is called as 72 Melakarta Ragas. A Melakarta Raga is, uh, correct me if I'm going wrong, Kanix, you are the expert, I'm just a novice. I'm just trying to impress you a little bit. Um, a Melakarta Raga is a Raga where it uses every one of the Sapta Swaras, all seven Swaras. Now, um, in, in Melakarta Raga, uh, the the way you get 72 there is a reason for that because in 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 carnatic music as well as in hindustani music you have one sa three knees sorry th three knees um, uh, you, let you me interrupt <laughs> yeah. give up okay uh, first of all there is no controversy about venkatamakhi um venkatamakhi was uh, one of the most respected musicologists he wrote a work called chatur dandi prakashika yeah. Um, in the 1600s, we came up with a theoretical system of classifying all the existing ragas into 72 different families of ragas. So his his contention was that uh, it, this set of 72 ragangas would cover every possibility that every raga that existed or every raga that had existed and disappeared, or every raga that would come into being later could be classified into one of the 72 families. That was his contention. So his grandson grandson developed upon this more and then uh, came up with the, the nomenclature for the 72 ragangas. Then Govinda Charya um, modified this theory a little bit and came up with 72 scales and not really ragas. So those are called the melas. Hmm. And the 72 melas, are also referred to as the Mela Kartas. And uh, so you have this scalar framework, which is at the core of the theory of uh, Carnatic music. And uh, in, Hindu, in Hindustani music, you do not have the 72 Mela Kartas system, but then there was this uh, brilliant musicologist called Pandit Bhatkande, who uh, I can talk more about him, we'll probably reserve it for a later session, but he came up with what's called the Thart system 
of families of uh, 10 families of ragas which could be used to explain all existing ragas in uh, the world of hindustani music and the way i look at hindustani music is that carnatic music is music of southern india and hindustani music or if you translate it into english hindustani music is just indian music right is the music of the rest of india so, right i mean it it, yeah. it is also very popular from like even dharwar right from dharwar up uh, hindustani has been practiced you know, all the way to, north, to the northeast northwest and everywhere so it's not just northern india it's it's a, it's a music of the rest of india Yes. where you don't hear carnatic music so. right right that's right that's right that's right yeah. so so i think i mean broadly speaking i think carnatic music was localized to the the four states uh, uh, com- the complete uh, unified andhra pradesh karnataka kerala and tamil nadu this is where most of the things happened and i think even at the northern borders of karnataka like northern cities like dharwar uh, you know you start yeah. seeing hindustani but i'm sure dharwar also had carnatic i mean that's where the genesis is right i mean carnatic so this, is, they say that in uh, weddings in northern karnataka you have chennai and you don't have nadu saram i'm not I see, sure i see uh, i see somebody told me this and I when see. i heard this 30 years ago i didn't believe it but now uh, then later on once i started listening more into more of the music of that region yes yes it's it's entirely possible so um let's uh, uh, i think we have, we we need to wrap up now before uh, we yes. <laughs> we get uh, we tire you bo- uh, tire our viewers so the 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 impact or the take away from this song was that ilai raja did things to uh, ragas he depending on what the mood of the movie was what the situation was he was not afraid to experiment and this song came probably in his fifth or sixth year of uh, being a music director and if you look at ilai raja's work which is what we are going to look at uh, in our next episode where we will examine how the composer ilai raja evolved over time because uh, some initially he had a certain type of go to instruments if you will call and then he slowly started increasing his uh, repertoire he also increased his range and and he had unparalleled success not just in tamil but also in telugu and i'm sure in kannada and kerala uh, in malayalam also but i tell you he is as much loved for his music in telugu music as well as as much as in in tamil and he also found success in hindi for instance who can forget surmai akhiyon mein aur dhak dhak karne laga so we're going to talk about all these things and more in our next episode kanix thanks for taking the time out we apro- apologize for some sure, of my pleasure you viewers with our next episode thanks for watching and please subscribe to p guru's channel thank you